talked about abstract classes and abstract methods. Um, Hold that thought for a while, because we're going to go in a little bit different direction, and then we'll come back and talk about abstract classes a, a little bit more. There's a problem with the is a test. All right? <laughs> Does it after the midterm, right? So you guys all are in trouble. The, the problem with the is a test is you could categorize a lot of things can be a lot of other things, right? A car, for example, is a vehicle. A car is also a thing with tires. A car is also a thing with batteries. A car is, what else would be? Is, is, is uh, gasoline powered, okay? So what do you do? All right. In Java, in fact, in most programming languages in which I am aware, there's no such thing as multiple inheritance. All right. We can give you a short answer or we can give you the long answer, but both answers lead you to the same conclusion. Multiple inheritance would be a mess. All right. For example, if there was a get description method, if we were able to make an automobile inherit both from car and gasoline powered, all right? If there was a get description method in the, um, in the, um, in both the gasoline powered and the automobile, which one would a car get? All right? So if you had multiple inheritance, Let's say there's a vehicle and a gasoline and a car. If from both of these, if there was a get description method on both, okay, there was a get there we go. There was a get description method on both. Which one would the car get? Which one would be the valid one for automobile? You don't know, right? Would it do both of them? Would it do one? You know, it it's just gets to be a mess. Confusing. So the creators of Java said that, okay, we do not allow multiple inheritance. So what do you think your approach is? If you had to decide between making car a subclass of vehicle or a subclass of gasoline powered, what would you do? Which one would you make it a subclass of? Vehicle. Why vehicle? Okay. Right lawnmower, uh, generator, uh, and all that. I, I think you're right. I think I would make it a vehicle. Um, any, any more reasons why you would make it? You, you guys have given some good reasons. I just want to see if you have some, anyone else has other thoughts about why you'd make it a vehicle more than something gasoline powered. Some of the things you said is that there's a lot of things that are gasoline powered, all right? I guess I want to talk about it in, in object-oriented terms. What's gasoline powered to? Okay. 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 All right, it's more of a direct. There are more similarities between cars and other vehicles than there are between cars and other gasoline-powered things. I think, I think you guys are hitting the absolute crux of the matter here. That's absolutely correct. Those would be the criteria I would use. Another, there's, you know, there's stronger and weaker is-us, right? Um, 
And when I say something's a stronger is a, it usually means two things. And these two things usually go together, fortunately. So it's not like you have to choose between them. One is, in real world terms, when you think of a car, do you think there's a vehicle or there is something that is gasoline powered? You might think both, but probably most people, if they were going to describe to someone, if someone didn't understand English, let's say, or someone woke up from, Rip Van Winkle woke up from a hundred year slumber or however long he slept and you had to describe a car to him, you would probably say it's a vehicle that blah, 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 blah. All right? So that's the sort of intuitive way, a real world way. You look at it and what you would think of it. Boy, that was weird. The lights just came on. Wow. Um, what you think about it in real world terms would, would probably be the right one. Now in programming or object oriented terms, the statement was made that there's a lot of similarities between automobiles and other vehicles. In other words, there would be more attributes and methods that a car would have in common with vehicles than it would with gasoline powered things. All right. So when you're faced with deciding, because you, could, you can categorize most things a couple different ways. First of all, you have to ask if it's relevant to the problem that you're trying to solve. Is it relevant that we can treat all gasoline powered things the same way? All right. If we're a machine shop, maybe it is, right? Or an engine repair shop, maybe it is. All right. But then, and just kind of real world, what strong sort of relationship? All right. Then you look at a, a number that is what. In which relationship are there more common attributes and methods? So, in general, what is the superclass? So, you can't have multiple inheritance. So, in our case, we're going to make a vehicle class and we'll inherit that a car class. But what if there was benefits to being able to treat all gasoline-powered vehicles the same? Or not, not gasoline-powered vehicles, gasoline-powered anything. All right. Um, at an engine repair shop, for example, we might want to know if a particular kind of gasoline works in an engine. All right. In other words, this engine, do you put in leaded or unleaded gas? What octane do you want, for example? All right. So there may be reason for us to make sure that uh, we treat all gasoline-powered things the same way. All right. Or are able to treat them in a certain way. All right. And yet, the specifics of how we treat them are going to be wildly different depending on the particular thing. Let me give you another example. All right. If we had, if we were, we were uh, in a situation where we were developing an application and we had animals and flying things. and vehicles. All right. And we had a bird class and an airplane class. Airplane. Oh my god, I can't spell today. It's a simple airplane, it's an airplane. All right. A bird is an animal. Birds also a flying thing. An airplane is a vehicle. An airplane is also a flying thing. Now, we know our bit on multiple inheritance that we can't do that. All right. So what we do uh,
do something like this. A bird is an animal. An airplane is a vehicle. But what do we do if we had a case where we would want to have some special sort of functionality for flying things? For example, let's say we are at the NASA observatory, all right, and we see something in the sky, we don't know what it is. But we can estimate its height, we can estimate its speed, all right. It might be possible for us to know. It could be a wet balloon, it could be an airplane. It could be a bird, all right? Maybe based on its size, we find out it can't, couldn't be a bird, all right? No bird, big, all right? Or we, uh, we assume from it that it couldn't be a, a um, you know, a, a, weather, um, a weather kite or something that they put up in the air to, to measure, take barometric pressure and, and readings like that. It couldn't be one of those. So, one tree, Tying things in a consistent way. And if we did the it would be straightforward. What we've learned so far would work. But inheritance because we the birds have more with animals than they have with flying things. And with this. And here's where the answer lies. The answer is with interfaces. All right? Interfaces, interface is one of those words that you really have to be careful about text because a lot of people who are the word interfaces, they think like graphical user interface or user interface or something like that. That's not here. All right? An interface is where we can define certain methods that exist, that need to exist on a class that implements that interface. All right? That is methods, signatures of methods in an interface. We don't have any code at all. So you could think about think about interface as being an abstract class with all act methods. You could When you decide to interface, you're saying what needs to implement in order to be in order to be considered a member of that interface, in order to implement that interface. So for example, with flying things, maybe we decide there's two methods that all flying things need to implement. Right? And let's say that each one of those returns a double. Accepts no arguments and returns a double. All right? Now, how would you calculate, how would you determine, any ornithologists in class, how would you determine how high a bird can fly? Might relate to the wingspan. We, we, uh, hint, hint, we can make anything up because no one's going to be fact checking this, right? Uh, yeah. I, the, the, the wingspan, the size, the species of the bird, uh, age of the bird, and so on, some characteristics of the bird. So that create that would say, you know, you know, eagles and chickens can, let's say. Now, can chickens fly? They sort of can, all right. Yeah, so, yeah, sort of there, and maybe they're 100 feet, and their maximum speed is half a mile an hour, whereas an eagle can fly, you know, a mile, and his maximum speed is who knows how fast. So there could be, in the bird, some sort of statement that would look at all the characteristics and return for that particular bird what's the highest that it could fly and what the speed 
that it could fly at. All right? How uh, the maximum height and maximum speed of an airplane? What would that depend on? Again, characteristics of the airplane, right, which are different characteristics than the characteristics of a bird. All right? Maybe some of them are the same. They both have wingspans. All right? But the kind of fuel that you put in, how many engines the plane has, what kind of, uh, of engines they are, what model plane is it, and so on. And again, you'd have a here, if you were an aeronautical engineer, that would look at all the and come say that this is how the plane could fly, how high it could fly. Uh, if you were doing cuts, you know, what's the fastest the flight? fast as the wind can blow, right? And what that a fly of thread that exists in the world, right? Those are characteristics for a kite, all right? So the interface is we have these one things, all right? Airplanes, anything that we consider to be flying, all right? And golf, maybe, maybe the golf balls that they hit would be considered to be flying. Um, but if engines, this isn't very specific. The difference between all things that could be gasoline powered, right? There are motorcycles, there are lawnmowers, that you really wouldn't climb, right? There's there's generators, there's all sorts of things that fall in the category of gasoline power. And they don't have common in terms of methods or attributes. But they have a couple of things that are in common. Maybe what kind of gas it takes. Does it take, take up? So, maybe our would be take yes or no. Maybe our in another direction for the gasoline, maybe, all right? And it, uh, the kind of color, it is a lead converter. If so, then it takes unleaded. Otherwise, it can take leaded gas, all right? Or generators, maybe certain generators you have to use unleaded, other ones you don't. I, the, the rule would be what? Front, the only thing they have in common is you should be able to any gasoline power thing do you take up and what you just be able to ask any flying thing what's your maximum speed what maximum height all right yes <laughs> We we would have we would have to define things that we were interested in that flew. So above, all right. So I would have to say that in my diagram, and I might have a big object diagram with all things inheriting from all kinds of other things. This is a flying thing, and this is a flying thing. So there would be no none of the above. You'd have to define that. And if there was something else that fits that, that, that is a member of that interface, um, then you'd have to make sure you define a class for it. Another thing, let's think about like in a supermarket, um, for example. Um, a supermarket would have all sorts of products, right? Supermarket would have, um, you know, has basic food stuff, right? And 
it has beverages and it has produce and it has uh, health and beauty items, it has over-the-counter remedies and things like that. Some of those things are age-restricted, right? Cigarettes, you have to be whatever, you have to be 18. Alcohol, you have to be over 21. Sudafed, you have to be 18. <clears throat> if you like a giant eagle and you try to buy an R-rated movie, you have to be over 18, you know, because sometimes they have movies right at the checkout. So there's certain items that regardless of the way they fit in the inheritance scheme, uh, scheme are age-restricted. All right? So what might a method be if I made an age-restricted interface? What do all age-restricted things have in common? Maybe a get minimum age? Is there anything else that we could, any other method that you think we could put? Get minimum age, absolutely. So it would return, you know, 18 for cigarettes and 21 for alcohol and 18 for Sudafed. Is permitted. And what would you pass that method? I'd pass the age. Okay. 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 And that would be a good method. So let's let's think about the methods that we could put into into our age restricted interface. Get minimum age. would return one. Right. And one might be return an in. All right, because there's anything that you can buy when you're 20 and a half years old or something like that, right? So it would be an integer. <laughs> good point. Temps. Very good. I, it took what you had said, but that, that would be a good point, your temporary driver's license. So maybe it would be a double. Not the minimum age. This one is going to return the minimum age. All right. You're absolutely right. We are going to have other methods that might return a Boolean. All right. But not this one. This one's literally returning the age. So what method might return a Boolean? is permitted. And what is going to return a bull for this? Could be the age. Could we write another is permitted method? And what would its arguments be? wouldn't be defined as a method to the outside world, though. Okay. In other words, what is every age, this will give you the age that, that you are required to be to get this product. All right? So this is, you know, this is thinking from the product. This is, we're putting, we're putting this, these methods on the product. All right? So, Age to purchase you, 18, 21, is permitted. We give you an age, it returns back, yes, it's permitted, no, it is not permitted. What could create on this? Oh, exactly. So, is permitted, and we don't pass an age, we pass a birth date.
Interfaces don't have properties. Okay? Interfaces are simply a template of, or a contract, they often use the terminology, of what a class needs to have in order to implement that template. Pardon me? Yeah, that's an example of that. There's no problem if we create a class like that. There, it, it is all, or, or there's no problem in that interface. There is only um, methods. Pardon me? Imp is permitted as Boolean. I'm going to write this on the board because I don't think. Oh, let me turn off the lights then. Well, it will know which one you want based on what argument you give it. So if you give it, a, if you give it a double, it knows that you want that one. If you give it a date, it knows you want that one. So when you overload methods, and again, what is methods? I'm not, not entirely sure I talked about this before. I'm, I might have. But an overload is where you have two methods that have the same name. All right? And they return the same thing. The difference is that the them are different. They're like, very much like overloading a constructor, right. Uh, in other words, if I someone's age, I can ask, are they permitted to buy it? And give the age. If I have the birth date, I don't have to compute the age, I can just give the birth date and have it calculate it. I'm thinking this is about what we would want. I can't really think of anything else. Can anyone think of anything else that we could do for this? Not no. The interface simply describes a list of a list of methods that every class that implements this needs to have. All right? So, let's go in and let's make a full of these and we'll make some test code to test this out. So, I pop her face. Thanks. I say pop age restricted. There we go. Public interface age restricted item. So there is not interface. I code in here. I am simply going to define signatures of functions. What signatures of functions? Signatures of functions are the function names. They are the takes, and they are the uh, return value. Thank you. Now, in greater detail, all right. Different state, right? That's not faces put bluntly. All right. Whoever implements the interface has to implement the lot necessary to determine that. So, if you're purchasing beer in offices, maybe beer in California. For example, maybe there's a difference in the law. Maybe 18-year-olds can buy beer. I don't know. Let's pretend there is a state where 18-year-olds can buy beer. 
you would then have lots of beer or the average class that would look at the state and then look at that. Yes? To prevent what? Right. No. No. Uh, the, when, we, when we implement the interface, we just have to declare that method. If that method doesn't do anything, it doesn't do anything. And that's fine. And I do take it back. Maybe this would have to give, maybe the, maybe the, um, I, I guess I, I do take it back. All would need the argument of state if we're going to go that route. All right, so we'd have to tell, if I'm age, I'd have to tell it what state I'm in. So we're going to forget I said anything about state and just consider this uniform across the country. All right, yes? Uh, arguments. Yeah, all those things together are the signature of a function. So I'm going to go and I'm going to say public double get minimum age. public boolean is permitted Repeat that, please. Nope. So we're going to save this just like we did before in a dot or in a file called the interface name dot Java. Actually, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to get rid of this one for now. I'm going to make my life easier. All right. So this class. Let's create a beer class. Public class beer. Now, this doesn't extend that class because, again, we're not inheriting from it. We are simply saying it implements that. All right? Implements age-restricted item. And... Actually, my, my, my head is still back thinking of the state thing. That, that actually could be included in the beers, would not necessarily be, need to be included in the interface. It could be included in the beers implementation of the interface. So, all right. So, I'm going to go and save this. Yeah.
What do you mean would I use that before implementation? Yeah, I think you say extends, then implements, yeah. Uh, keep in mind that a class can implement a lot of different interfaces, all right? That's the whole reason for the interface, is that, that it allows you to get that polymorphism on a number of different dimensions. I'm going to go and I'm going to try to compile this right here, just for laughs. And it's going to complain. We'll just see if it complains once or it complains a couple of times. Complain once. Let's look at what the error message says. Beer is not abstract and does not abstract method on, uh, is permitted in age restricted item. All right. What is that saying in English? All right. In English, it's saying, we said we were implementing the age-restricted item interface. What does it mean to implement an interface? It means every method that is an abstract method that's simply defined in the interface, again, all methods in an interface are abstract, all these methods we have to define here in the beer class. What said we have implemented that um, interface. So, I would add in those two methods. I mean? well, not really overloading. We're going to override, if you will, in here. So, public get minimum age. I could declare a public static final double. Min um, um, age equals twenty one and get in a minimum age would simply return that. It makes it a static. <laughs> yeah, it makes it a. Well, uh, let me let me put the second part of the answer in, and then hopefully it won't be as useless. It makes it a static variable. What is a static variable? A static variable doesn't depend on a specific instance. So, in other words, it, the minimum lay age for beer is 21. It's not like Budweiser, the minimum age is 19, and Coors, the minimum age is 18, and um, Great Lakes Brewery, the minimum age is 22, or something like that. that the, the, when you hear static, it means that the value of that does not depend on the specific instance of the class. So it doesn't matter what kind of beer we're talking about, the minimum age is 21. And maybe it will complain when I compile. All right. Um, in fact, I'll bet it will. We'll see if it does. If it does, we'll get rid of final. But I do want this to be a static variable, because it does not depend on the instance of it. And as such, um, by declaring it in the, um, actually, I think you do need both. Because you can make a static variable that can change. 
uh, how many how many classes do you how many objects of this class do you have open? You could you could create a static variable and increment it as you open and decrement it as you destroy it. So if you have four Just the one. Yep. All right. So is permitted? That's going to look like this. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we're not talking about, how do I want to say this? You know, that's a major deal. The bigger issue is conceptually. That doesn't depend on the kind of beer, so it should not be, should not be related to each individual object. So, I could make Boolean... Is anyone in my 243 class? Web database? I don't think so, looking around. You already took it? No, specifically this semester. Uh, where does the word Boolean come from? Yeah. Yeah, I had the hardest time when you first used it not to say Boolean. You know, like you have a chicken Boolean or beef Boolean? Pardon me? There is a bool in physics, but I think that means something else. I think that's with a U, B-O-U-L-E. This is B-O-O. -O. It's logic, right? Uh, it's named after George Bull, who was a, a pioneer in symbolic logic. So, like I told my other class, he's the person that invented true and false. <laughs> Everything else was just a maybe before him. So if I is greater than or equal to minimum age. B return equals true. All right, so now I go and save this and try recompiling, and it's okay with it. Why? Because I've implemented those methods. So, the way that and a lot, I think our textbook and the way I've heard it said a lot is that when you implement an interface, that's a contract. It's a promise that you will have these methods, whatever methods are in the interface, you will have those methods in your class. Now you can have a lot of other stuff too, right? You could have a public double get out percentage. that, you know, returns something. I don't even know. What's the decent alcohol percentage for beer? 5%? We'll go with that. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, public string get type. I'm just putting in garbage here, you know, maybe there would be a set type and get type, set alcohol percentage, get alcohol percentage, whatever. Um, but there can certainly be other stuff in there as well, all right, but there has to at least be those things, all right. So, let's save this and make sure it still compiles. 
It does. Let's make a second one of these because it really doesn't make sense to just talk about class implementing an interface. You get the power when you have a second class that does it as well. So we'll put in a Sudafed class. And it also implements age restricted item. And as it turns out, its minimum age is 18 and so on. There could be a public double Yeah, get limit. Return. I don't know what the limit is. I'm thinking in terms of milligrams, folks. Come on. Uh, there could be, and again, I'm just putting these stub functions in. There would probably be gets and sets for like the different boxes. Get number of pills. Well, the, the, moral, the moral of the story, period, is get the design right, all right? and get the class diagram right, all right? Because to be sure, you could go back and retrofit it. I mean, if we did this and didn't use a, an interface, you know, we would run the risk of things being inconsistently named and, and so on and so forth. Exactly. You can put anything else in. And again, if this inherits beer from beverages, and Sudafed inherited uh, uh, from over-the-counter medicines, all right? It would get inherited from that, too, and that would work just like a regular subclass, superclass relationship. But what the implement says is the implements is a problem. It's got to have these methods. Yes? You don't magic up. Because uh, the, the determination of whether, the determination if someone can buy this or not really only just depends on the age of the person. It's not a complicated algorithm. All right? Think back an an airplane. Uh, um, how a can fly uh, versus how could fly is going to be one different. There you're not cutting and pasting. All right. I mean, we could add more complexity in this by saying that maybe in California the 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 age for beer is is 18. You know, and then the algorithm would be a little more um, involved. But the reason that th that it seems like copying and pasting is because for age-related things, um, it's very straightforward, the method of determining whether a product is, a person's eligible to buy that product or not. Okay, yes. Question? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, another way of saying implements is to say this can serve in the role of this. So a beer is in the role of a restricted item. All right. A Sudafed is in the role of. So any function, and here's where the power is going to come in. All right. Do you mind if I go a couple minutes over? Okay. Let's write our test class.
to In, in, in abstract classes, you can have non-abstract methods. No, abstract methods don't have code. Right. So let's go write a little test. Class. And I'm going to say public class unit. Test. I'm going to write a method down here. And the this is not going to be bare, it's not going to be pseudofed. It is going to be a age restricted item. So let's imagine that I just sort of that formats messages saying, I'm sorry you can't buy this item. You know, how old are you or what's your birth date? You enter it in and it says, Nope, you can't buy it. This is going to be the function that displays that. That. All right. So I'm going to go and create.
And that's what gives you the polymorphism of this. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to make sure this works, and then we will, I'll run it down quickly, and then we will pick this up next time. Beer is denied, must be 21, Sudafed approved. Okay, the person that we gave hypothetically is, is 19 years old. Now, here's the whole idea, and this is where the power comes from. The fact that this method can accept anything, any argument, as long as it implements the age-restricted item interface. Because if it, if, it can, if it has that interface, then the compiler is going to have the is permitted method, so I can call it the method, and I can call it the minimum age method. Now, I calculated or determined, all right, and I'm very straightforward, simply an age that you have to be. But there could be an outcome looked at your location and what country you're in and what state you're in and so on and so forth and come up with the answer of how to be to buy Sudafed, how old do you have to be to buy beer? But in this case, it's very straightforward, where it's just 18 and 21. But any, anything that implements that interface, I can give as an argument to this function, and it will look, and it can, it'll, it'll call methods, and um, it knows methods are there because by implementing the interface, it's a guarantee, it's a contract that anything that implements that has those methods on it. All right. We'll pick up on this next time. So it may be a little fuzzy. Feel free to download the application and run it. Feel free to make your own class. Make, uh, make a cigarette class or uh, uh, what else is age restricted? Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think. Pardon me? <laughs> All right. And, and try implementing uh, the interface there. All right. And we'll talk more about this on Wednesday. You could. Yeah, that'd be one way to go about it. You'd you'd want to you'd want to think through to see if you really had a case.